Hey, evening, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Vorek. A special thanks to the 170 that have subbed already, and please continue subscribing if you enjoy the content and have not already. At the easy to use subscribe button down below or at the widget at the end, is this is going to be recapping another very bad L for Philadelphia Flyers as the only thing they really let in in this game and did well in was the shots category in 34 to 28 because they put too much high octane chances on Carter Hart. The first goal was, of course, a puck that Hart couldn't locate due to a great screen by Lafreniere as well as being screened out. It looked like Sealer or one of our other players blocking him in front there on a shot by True. But from the point that the Flyers should learn from because they cycled the puck really quick from the left to right then had a give and go on the right side there if you're looking at it from this way as Trubo was able to pass it, get it back, and fire it and score. It's not overly complicated when you have talented guys and the Flyers have that. They should learn from that power play goal by Truba that was because of a frost high stick who was inconsistent tonight but really looked good after he was able to tally his goal in the second period Morgan Frost did for the rest of the second and then had a bad turnover that they lived to tell about in the third period but McEwen again in the first period particularly looked solid he had a nice wrister early on that was saved by Shashurkin and then full Farabee's shoulder upper body injury it was um labeled as it looked like his shoulder going into the board um has not returned did not return in the game excuse me which was very Awful to see. And then later in the game, as well as Joel Fairby, we wish Barkley Goodrow all the best because he got hit as Yandel shot one up his stick shaft that ended up, it looked like it might even got him in the eye because the visor, which you don't usually see, broke. So that's something to wish him well and hope he's okay from. And Fairby, too, that was former teammate and former teammate. Of course, both played for Team USA. Um, as youngsters was Fairby was banged up by Keandre Miller, who made sure, which was great to see from Keandre, great um, player developing in the Rangers organization, but obviously also a great dude, went over to see if Fairby was okay. And then, obviously, when it comes to the second goal, Hunt was robbed minutes later. Dryden Hunt, who, of course, then got ejected later in the game, rightfully so, for the five-minute major. I disagree with Gallant arguing a lot there. That looked like a defenseless player. You left your feet, like Boucher said in the broadcast. You can't be doing that, particularly when you're up 3 nothing. That's nothing that's acceptable there. Dryden Hunt gets the major, and it'll be interesting to see if he gets a hearing. He's been playing great moving up in the Rangers lineup, so that actually will be a bigger loss than some overall fans and non-fans of the Rangers, and us Flyers fans actually see for the Rangers because he really has been playing well, stepping up, moving up in that lineup, starting on the fourth line, and then moving up. And then Hunt was able to, of course, score seconds later on a beautiful move where he was able to drag it around Provorov, who's really still been struggling mightily. Uh, looked like Nick Sealer was the defenseman, but he was able to drag it around Provorov before I say that and get a very nice goal that he was able to put through the five hole of Hart. And then, but... What I was going to say is Provorov's been struggling mightily. He hasn't been doing too successfully. Well, you got to get him going. Somebody tweeted out earlier today, I remember when scrolling through the dockets of tweets during the game, that Couturier has been average. Well, yeah, that is true. He has been playing very average. You need to see better play. He has been had to use in a lot of different facets, but he will tell you that's not an excuse. So we got to see better play out of Sean Couturier. That is for darn sure. And then Nick Sealer, of all people, if you were to tell me, had Nick Sealer was going to be a first-line guy, I would have thought you were nuts if you would have told me that he's a guy that we're banking on in the third period, like J.J. said on the broadcast. Um, he's a guy that was out there a lot in the third period. He's a guy that they seem like they were actually giving it to to rely on, and that's because he is just a shot-blocking defensive guy, but that's never a guy in a million years you would expect to be saying that about at this point in the season. Nemeth also made a nice play in the first on a two-on-one, and as I said earlier, the Flyers need to learn from the power play. Of the Rangers that Jacob Truba was able to score on in the first period. And then Dryden Hunt, of course, scored the second goal. Um, as our Philadelphia Flyers then were down 2-0 to zip after the end of the first period. And then right at the beginning of the second, it didn't even take long. Only 34 seconds in on tic-tac-toe passing from Kreider to from Kreider that he received from Kako for his fifth assist, and Jabenajad for his 13th assist, was able to get it done on tic-tac-toe passing, so it didn't even take long to get it going there into that period for them. And then, of course, it was the five-minute major. Braun luckily did come back in this game. Hopefully there's no lingering stuff in the future since we have seen guys, of course, many times in the past come back in games and then still be out after coming back. Hopefully that's not the case with Justin Braun. Kreider... Um, that was his 16th goal he was able to score, and then Hart also made a great save at the end of that period as well. Um, 
when it came to the Flyers, when it came to their major penalty and performing on that power play, they were not able to tally a goal. It's something that I'm getting tired of, obviously, saying, well, you had the chance, you just couldn't get it done. It was a hot goaltender. Um, Al Morgani pointed out on the broadcast, it's to a point where with the Flyers, you're not at that point anymore. You have to figure out a way to get over the hump and just get the goal in, however dirty it is. But it was nice to see them get better chances. Shesterkin was the MVP of that power play. It was perfect. But you have to be able to figure it out. It was chances but no finish, as Jim Jackson was quoted saying um, in the broadcast. Frost did get his first in the second. Or get his first, um, yes, it was in the second period. He got his first in the second period at 9.37 on the backhand when he had a very good shift being able to really kind of be pesky on the defensive end too while in the offensive zone being able to take the puck off of opposing players there and really looking good being able to be a guy that played better and played with more jump in the second period after that is one of the better forwards for the rest of the second. But then, as Jamie Bascott tweeted, he wasn't consistent throughout the game. Of course, I had a second high sticking penalty they were able to live to tell about. And then he also had the turnover late that they were able to live to tell about. So it's still inconsistent for the youngster Morgan Frost, but all in all, for a guy that got rushed up, according to uh, Brett Flair, who, of course, is our assistant GM, that they seem like they wanted to kind of nurture him and, and season him a bit more in the minors, where he's got brought up quicker than the organization wanted. I think he's looking perfectly fine. It was inconsistent, but he was better, one of our better looking forwards, even through the inconsistency on the night, along with um, McEwen still having pretty good nights. And then when it came to their last goal, that was just um, Panarin getting an empty netter to seal it there where Hart was good again. The team just couldn't pick him up in front of him. And the Flyers did not score in the third on the power play as well. So that's something they, again, were not able to do. Not able to get any goal scoring going um, in the third period to be able to close it out. They led in the shots in this game, but that's about it. The Rangers were the much better possession team. The Rangers were the much better push the ante team. They're the much better strategic team actually being able to get good, good opportunities rather than... And Flyers, you only had them mixed in few and far between, like on the five-minute major, they had them mixed in, and also obviously on the shift with Frost, where he, and then the shift afterwards, that too, where Frost was able to then have another chance, but it was a nice save by, by Shesterkin. Those are the few chances, but there wasn't enough, obviously. The Flyers lose 4-1 to is another damning loss for the Flyers, as their next game um, for the Philadelphia Flyers is going to be against the Colorado, or no, excuse me, we play the Tampa Bay Lightning before we play the Avalanche on Monday, against the Tampa Bay Lightning at home at 6 p.m. on Sunday, which is not getting any easier. The 12-5-4 back-to-back Stanley Cup champs after losing 4-1 to to the New York Rangers. Hopefully by some miracle or Flyers can kind of figure this out. In practice, it looks pretty bleak now. I'm usually pretty positive, as you guys know, but it's hard to pull much positivity from the way the Flyers are playing right now. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Again, a special thanks to the 170 that have subbed. Hopefully, we can get over this losing skit very soon. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and continue subscribing if you enjoy the content, as well as over at Flyers Nitty Gritty. And also enter Steel Flyers in the Manscaped and you get 20% off and a free delivery. Peace out, everybody.